Hello, my name is Helen Rennie. I'm the founder of Helen's Kitchen Cooking School, and today we're going to learn to dice and mince a shallot. This is the shallot top, and this is the shallot root. The root is what's going to hold the shallot together as you're dicing it, so you keep as much of the root on as possible. I suggest giving your root a buzz cut to prevent the little hairs from getting into the finished product and cut the top off completely. Set the shallot on the flat surface and cut it in half. Now peel the dried up layers from the outside of the shallot and take a look inside. More often than not you'll find multiple cloves inside. If that's the case you have to separate the shallot into cloves and peel the dried up layers from around each clove. If the clove has multiple dried up layers, make sure you keep on peeling until you get to the good part and clean off your board. Dicing a shallot is exactly the same as dicing an onion. We're going to place it with the root facing away from you and we're going to slice it parallel to the lines on the shallot but keep it attached at the root. What I want to draw your attention to is how to do a claw grip on such a little vegetable. So I'm going to place my second and third fingers right on top of my shallot. My thumb is going to be supporting it behind and my fourth and fifth fingers are off the board. So basically I gathered all my fingertips into a single point and I'm standing right on top of my shallot. Use the tip of your knife to make slices all the way down but keep your shallot attached at the root. When there is absolutely nothing to hold on to, I'm going to move my hand out here to make the final cut. Now place your shallot close to the edge of the board, get your hand and the handle of the knife off the board so that you can be low and parallel to your board and make one or more parallel cuts depending on the size of your shallot. So again the question is where do you put this guiding hand? Well I'm going to put it right here close to the root because I'm not going to go all the way to the root. I'm going to stop before I get to my hand. Now let's finish slicing our shallot. We're going to place it in the usual spot, close to the handle, right here in the back of the knife. Use the claw grip, and here you have a good bit of space to do your normal claw grip. Put your fourth and fifth fingers out, stick out your elbow so that the thumb is hiding, and slice. Now some people prefer using a little paring knife for a shallot because it's so small. That's fine, but you still need to use a claw grip unless you want to say goodbye to your fingers. So I'm using a paring knife to cut the shallot all the way down but keep it attached at the root. Now I'm going to rotate it and make a couple of cuts parallel to the board. Again my guiding hand is way out here at the root. Now for that final step I actually prefer to switch to a chef's knife. So if you don't mind dirtying two knives, you can do the first two steps with a paring knife. Now this is a small dice and it might work very nicely in some recipes, but others might call for minced shallot. If you want it minced, in other words really tiny pieces, then you can switch to a mincing hand hold on your chef's knife. I'm still holding the blade with a pinch grip, but my guiding hand is now on top of the blade, not doing a claw grip. Now the shallot is going to sit towards the back of the knife near the handle so that I don't have to lift my knife very much. And just the back of my knife lifts up and down. And I'm turning this shallot into itty bitty pieces. You probably noticed that shallot or whatever it is that you're mincing likes to climb up the knife and get stuck there. Whatever gets stuck only gets chopped once so you have to clean off the blade of your knife once in a while and collect all the shallot in one place so that you can be nice and efficient and on one go cut through many many pieces. There we go. Men's shallot. From Helen's Kitchen in Boston, happy cooking and baking to you.